Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My mother-in-law is the biggest a-hole out there and I can't believe she tried to pull a stunt like this. I'm hella pissed and can't think straight right now, so I'm asking you people if you guys think I should take revenge on her. Is she really the worst person to exist or not? So last Monday I was working late and when I eventually returned home I saw patrol cars parked in the driveway. As I couldn't get in, I parked the car a few ways behind on the road and go up to the house to find my mother-in-law standing on the porch with some officers. First, I was afraid that something happened to her or maybe someone tried to rob the house or something bad that would require her to call 911. I quickly ran up to her and asked her what happened and why are all these officers here? She then goes on to completely ignore me and signals the officer. As soon as I noticed her pointing towards me with a nod of her head, I realized she's completely fine and I'm the one in danger. I instantly started panicking while the officer told me to stay where I am and not to make sudden movements. Sudden movements? I couldn't even make sudden thoughts by the way my whole body and mind was frozen up. I couldn't comprehend why I was getting arrested. Once the officer cuffed me, he told me that I'm under arrest and until I can prove otherwise, I need to be secured. Gradually, I started thinking again and took a few deep breaths. I asked them why I was being arrested and what was going on. I looked at my mother-in-law and demanded to know what she was doing. She said to me that I can't fool anyone anymore and that she knows all about how I'm stealing from her. That knocked me dumb. Stealing? I asked her what I stole. She started saying all sorts of things from around the house. She continued talking about how she always knew I wasn't a good woman and her son made a mistake marrying me. She said if it was her choice, she'd never allow me in this house. She said she knew something like this would eventually happen and I'm just a gold digger. I scoffed at that. I asked her what exactly I had stolen that she's charging me with the crimes of theft. Did I also qualify for larceny or her grace stops at theft? She had the sense to look a little unsure after listening to that, but she recovered herself pretty quickly and continued yapping nonsense. She specifically described the items I had stolen and how she found all of them in my closet. She said I'm probably waiting to find a pawn shop or something where I can sneak the items off to and exchange them for money. It was all so ridiculous that I didn't even bother stopping her at this point. I stood quietly there and kept breathing deeply to keep my bearings about me so I didn't rip her throat out. I knew we had our differences. I knew we... Never can see eye to eye on anything, but to go to such ridiculous lengths just because of hate was tilting on the side of being pathetic. Once she was done yapping her made-up stories, I quietly asked the officer if I'm allowed to defend myself here. Once she was done yapping her made-up stories, I quietly asked the officer if I'm allowed to defend myself here. The officer said I have to go down to the station to complete the paperwork, even if by some miracle I'm able to prove my mother-in-law wrong. I then told him to take one specific item from the house while he took me. I told him the security password and asked him to take the CCTV recordings too. When my mother-in-law heard about CCTV, her face paled. That was the most satisfactory moment for me of that whole godforsaken ordeal. That look on her face made me able to go through this trouble because she was frozen from shock. She completely forgot that we have cameras all over the house. Once we went down the station, the officers were able to go through the CCTV. What they found there managed to shock me too. We clearly saw my mother-in-law take a few small items from around the house belonging to different members and put them all in a garbage bag. Then she hid the garbage bag in my room and called the cops. The stuff had some very expensive stuff in there. My father-in-law's Rolex, my mother-in-law's diamond jewelry, and even some cash. She, for real, took everything and put it there just to get me out of that house. That's some deep-seated hatred she had for me, and I didn't even do anything. All I did was fall in love with her son and marry him. How can anyone be this level of petty and pathetic? Can anyone here explain to me just how can these a-holes exist? Is it okay to cause someone this kind of trouble just because they married into their family? I can't even fathom her mind right now. Anyway, once the proof was there, the officer who took me under promptly discharged me. 
He apologized for wasting my time and also said he's sorry I got such a horrible mother-in-law. That made me realize that this woman not only wasted my time, she also wasted the time of these officers who obviously have got serious crimes to prevent. She didn't only cause a petty scene in our house, she might even have ruined another life because how can these officers in future believe people when these kinds of false reports are being made? I was able to safely return home thanks to the CCTV proof, but now I'm on my guard and I'm beginning to think what more lengths she can go to. Now that I think about it, I might even need to take some precautions. I have successfully hired a lawyer. He's one of my friends from a long time ago, so I was able to easily work with him. I'm charging my mother-in-law with false accusations. After the troubles she's put me through, there's no way I was going to sit tight. And if I refuse to take action now, she might consider me weak and do something utterly ridiculous again. So my lawyer filed the paperwork last week and soon the trial will start. Hopefully, I don't have to fight very hard as the CCTV and the officers make a tight enough case. But she's my mother-in-law, so I can't leave anything on chance. I'm going to make sure she regrets the moment she decided to mess with me. She hated me for no good reason until now, but after I'm done with this case, she's going to have more than enough reason to hate me all my life. She not only tried to send me to jail, she also jeopardized my reputation in the neighborhood and my workplace since I work at the local high school and the kids I teach live in the same neighborhood. I had to answer so many questions and clear so many misunderstandings because of her. It was a horrible month of my life and now she's going to pay for what she did. She even stressed out my relationship with my husband. Since it was his mother, he asked me to let it go and forgive her. But how can I? Can anyone just sit tight and forgive this horrible person? The false accusation trial against my mother-in-law has finally come to an end. The judge passed a verdict two days ago and I've won. My mother-in-law got charged with a fine of $5,000 and a year in jail for falsely accusing a person of theft and for obstructing justice and for stalling officers from doing their duty. She's now serving her sentence and I've also received the fine she was supposed to pay. Actually, my father-in-law paid me on her behalf. I have struggled for these last few months, trying my best to get some kind of legal justice and keep my relationships together, but it all started to fall apart. The fight between his wife and his mother caused my husband to finally give up on both of us. He took a transfer and is now working in the London branch of his IT company. He said he'll be back once he feels like it, but for now, he needs his space. So in the end, even though I got my justice, my mother-in-law ended up getting what she always wanted. That is, she was able to break my family apart, even at the cost of going to jail. I never thought I could hate someone so much. I've been constantly cursing and criticizing her. My life has been completely destroyed just because I decided to retaliate to something that she started. I don't know what to do right now. Even though I won the trial case, I don't feel like I actually won anything. It's been a year since my husband left for another country. Our communication was scarce initially, but time and space helped us a lot. We were able to remember the things we liked about each other, and he's finally decided to transfer back here. I hope things get better, and us living together again doesn't open past wounds. My mother-in-law is also out of jail now. She actually got out sooner on parole and did community service to lessen her sentence. I haven't talked to her once since the trial, and I don't plan to. After everything that happened, I also moved houses so I don't have to remember the damned incident that caused my life to completely change. Since everything was changing and I couldn't do anything at that time to stop that from happening, I decided to willingly change this one thing. Moving houses has also helped me with learning to live alone without my husband around. I have no kids, so I was able to live out my life however I wanted, and the whole incident with my mother-in-law made me realize that it doesn't take much to change a life, and I've started to appreciate each and everything about it. Even though I was finally enjoying living separately from my husband, I've missed him a lot, and I'm looking forward to his return. I've already talked to him about my situation with my mother-in-law and have made it very clear that I'd never tried to have any kind of relationship with her, even for my husband's sake. And if he can't accept that, things between us won't work. Surprisingly, he said he was expecting that and is okay with that fact. I was glad to hear that. I can just hope that things don't get worse and only get better from here on.
NTA, you're not the a-hole. I can't believe you had to go through that kind of horrible situation. I don't understand why some mother-in-laws in this world forget the fact that their children can make their own choices when it comes to a life partner, and they eventually have to accept their children's choices. NTA, I hope your mother-in-law suffers just as much as she made you suffer. This was a truly horrifying read, and I hope you can move on and live a happy life. I am a 21-year-old female, and I'm an affair baby. My dad cheated on his ex-wife with my mom. They were married for 10-plus years, and two years into the marriage, my dad quit his job to start a business while his wife became the sole majority breadwinner. Eventually, my dad's business became very successful, and he was ranking out hundreds of thousands of dollars as personal profit. Around that time, he became involved with my mom. My dad wanted to leave his wife for my mom, but knew that his ex-wife could clean him out in a divorce, since the money she earned was used to help fund his business ventures. She co-signed business loans and even did occasional labor on her off time for the business. My mom didn't like my dad's reluctance to leave his ex and eventually broke off the relationship not knowing that she was already pregnant with me. When she found out the plan was always to give me up for adoption as she felt the need to tell my dad but on the day that I was actually born she changed her mind and decided to keep me. I was around two years old when my parents re-established contact and by that time my dad had convinced his ex-wife to sign a post-nuptial agreement with an infidelity clause that would be heavily in the hurt party's favor if ever proven. Up until that time, my mom kept saying that I was the result of a one-night stand, but when she and my dad decided to get back together after my dad divorced his ex, she finally told him about my paternity and he wasn't happy and told my mom about the infidelity clause. They decided that it would be best to keep everything between themselves in the hopes that his ex wouldn't find out. I didn't even know for the majority of my life and just thought that my dad was my stepdad. Because I grew up not knowing who my bio dad was, I wanted to do the ancestry testing and my mom and dad were vehemently against it. Knowing that I was still going to do it, they decided to tell me the truth and I got mad and did it anyway, thinking that they were lying. I ended up matching with several members of my dad's family and everything blew up. The ex-wife has now reached out to the lawyers about petitioning the courts to renegotiate the terms of the divorce settlement as I am living proof of infidelity. If the courts are granted the right to renegotiate, then my dad's ex may be able to take it all, if not the lion's share of it all, and a lot of people on my mom's side of the family lean on my dad and his finances for support. A-I-T-A. -A. You're the victim here. The one person who had nothing to do with creating a circumstance where revealing the truth, your existence, could cost your father money. You were lied to for most of your life, and now that there are tools to help you find the truth, it was natural for you to take advantage of them. Then the truth came out. NTA, by the time he signed that infidelity clause contract, he knew he darn well had cheated already. He quite literally set himself up to fail, deserves whatever happens to him. As for your mom's side of the family, they shouldn't be relying on him, and that's on her for fooling around with a married man in the first place. Although I'm not a fan of pets, about four years ago I agreed to purchase a dog for my wife and child. Because I was not a fan of the idea and felt I was compromising, I made it clear that it was their dog and they were to take care of it. And most importantly, I refused to pick up dog poop, ever. I find it disgusting and it makes me sick just thinking about it. Anyway, they agreed and we purchased a beautiful Rottweiler puppy. For the most part, they kept up their promise. However, I was always on them about things like leaving empty dog food cans in the backyard. We had a rodent problem early when we bought our home. And worst of all, leaving bags of poop all over the place. I can't begin to tell you how often I fussed about finding bags of poop on the fence. On the brick wall, everywhere but the trash can, the smell literally makes me nauseous. One day I found a bag of dog poop on the corner of our kitchen counter. Now, to be fair, it wasn't on an area we typically prep food on. We had a pretty large countertop, so there was plenty of space. But to someone that is grossed out by the sight, smell, and feel of dog poop, I was so upset. I immediately confronted my wife and child, and my wife admitted to it. I read her the riot act. 
Her position was that we didn't prepare food on that area of the counter. I told her it didn't matter. It was the kitchen and that was gross. I asked her that it never happen again. Not long after that, it happened again. I again had a conversation with my wife about how I felt about it and again asked that she'd never do it again. One day, sometime after that, I was home while my wife was at work. I may have been homesick from work. I slept in a bit and when I woke up, I was hungry. When I headed to the kitchen, there was another bag of poop on that same spot on the kitchen counter. I was beyond enraged when I saw that. I could not believe what I was seeing. As I stood there fuming, I looked down and noticed a pair of her sneakers by the front door. So I took the bag of poop and placed it in one of her shoes and went on with my day. To be clear, I did not remove the poop from the bag. I simply took the bag and placed it in her shoe. Several hours passed and honestly I forgot about it as I wasn't feeling well. Now my wife rarely gets angry with me but when she finally came home she was furious with me for what I'd done. I reminded her I'd already asked her twice and reminded her how gross it was. She was fuming at me. To clarify, these were not an expensive pair of shoes, just a regular pair of sneakers. Her shoe did smell like poo, and I definitely didn't intend for that to happen. I was just trying to make a point. I should also point out that I am also somewhat of a germaphobe, and I have gotten worse as I've grown older. I'll also add that since doing that, I've never found a bag of dog poop on my kitchen counter. A-I-T-A? I really want to say NTA, while putting poop in a shoe isn't what I'd consider the best way to resolve this situation, I really can't think of anything else for you to do when they just refuse to listen. If you had emptied the bag, I'd think differently, but they need to learn somehow, and I think this was probably the most harmless way you could have established your point further. As much as I want to say ESH, dog poop everywhere, especially the kitchen counter, it's disgusting, and I'm not even a germaphobic. NTA for being petty after your appropriate attempts at conflict resolution were ignored. ETA. I do justified a-hole if it was an option. 